coming uh, in this session organized by uh, Islamic Relief uh, and other co-sponsors. So purpose of this session is to contribute to the broader knowledge of ERR and climate change in Bangladesh. So this session perhaps is not going to discuss all the problem and solution uh, in the area of disaster uh, and climate change. And you all know the magnitude of the problem. So we are one of the countries uh, are going to be already affected by climate change and there are lots of studies already done by many different uh, organizations and individuals uh, saying for example uh, you all know climate change has disaster impact and also non-disaster impact and perhaps disaster impact uh, is felt already in Bangladesh and we know in Bay of Bengal the cyclonic frequency has been increased uh, particularly in the month of May and November. Uh, and we have data over 122 years and we have seen that you know, twofold increase in cyclonic activity in the Bay of Bengal. And we are already one of the, you know, already a country where cyclonic and disaster mortality rate is highest in the world. So it's very natural that our, you know, the mortality rate will go high because of the increased frequency and uh, the nature of disaster, the way it is changing. And World Bank did a very nice study, and they are saying that uh, due to climate change, uh, there will be 26% increase of the area affected by cyclone in Bangladesh. And the number of people affected by disaster will go high up to 122% from today. So, situation is not very happy. Uh, and we have to deal with that. So how do we manage increased frequency of disaster? Uh, how do we manage changing pattern and nature of disaster? Uh, and what role different actors can play? These are the groups of people who don't have adequate knowledge about climate change and whatever the problem and policy that we discuss. And these are the groups of people who can access the resource, who can access the technology. So this is, a very, this is a very central problem that you have raised. You also offered some very good solution. Uh, the third presentation was uh, on the risk perception and the people's ability to predict early warning, uh, sorry, predict disaster, as well as uh, the people's own indigenous knowledge and disaster management system at the people's level, at the household level, at the community level. But he also raises an important point that yes, although it exists, it may not be sufficient to address the increased trend uh, and the change nature of uh, disaster as a result of climate change. The fourth presentation, the exciting presenter from India, raised, provided us a very interesting framework about livelihood and DRR. Um, and you also said about the, the since risk uh, the livelihood is not there, what people would do. I have a solution, very simple. They will do carbon trading. Why don't we teach them to do carbon trading? Why people like us would do that carbon trading? So, but, but it is a very central problem uh, that you have raised, uh, that mitigation is important, what you say. He also talked about the technical aspect, the methodologies to involve children in the, in the discussion, uh, in the planning process, and finally he raises this very serious question about the political economy of all climate change planning uh, processes, which, which is uh, manipulated by adults. Uh, the children don't have legitimate space, he said it's not in the policy, legitimate space to participate in the planning process. So I have a few points, a uh, few issues for young researcher, a uh, couple of issues. One is you tend to focus on technical aspect of ERR and climate change. Often, you know, as a young researcher, you'd be more excited and interested to explore those technicalities. But what I believe, you know, you also need to question who is defining my research agenda. Why, why I'm doing a research on climate resilient housing, not why government is not adopting that, understanding the policy barrier and political barrier of that. And why I'm raising that because I personally believe that technicalities are not the biggest, big, big challenge in Bangladesh. I think the polit politics and the policies are the much bigger challenge for disaster risk reduction, whether in the climate change context or non-climate change context. I think that is the area where we have 
highest knowledge gap. And as a nation, I think fairly we have good knowledge about technicality, how to build a house. Uh, disaster is a house, how to build a backman, whether to build house or to cyclone shelter, all the technicalities, all the what product to grow, which product to uh, you know, provide, the technicality. Having said that, I also believe we need more research on those areas, but you also need to make a balance because all five research came from one type of technical area. So look at that. The presentation was excellent. Uh, in terms of presentation, I suggest you need to have more articulation in, in, you know, in clarifying your research findings, what you have found, rather than the process mode. Some of the studies, for example, indigenous knowledge or, or the inequality that you have raised, which are the areas which are already researched, already you know, established knowledge in certain areas, but they are not coming. So there is no acknowledge and common body of knowledge in Bangladesh. Clearly, that what you say, that the way we are doing DRR will not be sufficient in the context of climate change. But you also say, the vulnerability that is causing problem today are the same vulnerability that would cause problem in the climate change region. So that there is a big opportunity that if we understand the vulnerability very well, if we understand the capacity very well, we can design a very good DLR program into the context of climate change. Third point that you have is some somebody mentioned from that corner that the whole DLR and CCA is a business of uncertainty. DRR is not a business of uncertainty because it is known pattern of the dust. When we do DRR in the context of climate change, we are entering into a business of uncertainty. And Sajid gave a very interesting answer. It is not an uncertainty. There, there are certainty. What is that? That is the knowledge building. That we should make sure that the people who are vulnerable know their vulnerability. People who are living into risk has the you know, knowledge, skills, uh, access to the policies, to the resources, so that they can accommodate the new knowledge, they can understand the policy context, the nature context better, and they can address those risks. My final question is about inequality. That's a very important point that, uh, that you have raised. You don't use that term uh, in inequality, you say extreme poverty. Basically, you are talking about the inequality, and that is something very central. I think from this room, this is one message that we want to, we want, we should give to the minister and the policy makers that there is a differential impact of climate change and not everyone is equally affected. But unfortunately, not everyone has equal access to resources. Not everyone has equal access to information. So we need to address that. Not all districts are equally affected. Some districts are more affected. Within that district, some people are more affected. So we need to understand differential as differential impact of climate change, differential impact of climate change on disaster and through, through the increased vulnerability. Uh, that's all from my side. Uh, thank you so much. Let's have a big clap for thank all of us.